am Joanne Banco, author, designer, and sewing educator. And today we've got a great spa style robe as a featured project for you today. Maybe your next vacation includes a little bit of time at a spa. Maybe you just want to have a spa day at home. Either way, this is the perfect, perfect project. So let me get started and we'll show you some details. I've got some great tips and tricks to show you today. Let's take a look first of all at the robe and you can see that you know it's set apart from what you would buy at ready to made at you know ready to wear i don't know about you but sometimes when you're talking to you know non-sewing friends and they say hey, what are you doing today oh i'm making a robe oh you could buy that well sure you could but you can't buy one just like this you can't buy something that's customized custom fit custom sewn and includes all the great details that we've got here today. So we've got some trim on this robe if you look at um, the band area and I actually call this uh, shell tuck trim. It's a special trim that I make with some very simple materials and a very simple stitch on the machine. We're going to show you that today. And this robe also features a lot of combination sewing and serging. So I want to be able to show you that and show you some, um, you know, when you would use the serger, when you would use the sewing machine, and how you would um, combine both of them. But let's just take a little peek on the inside. I'm going to peel this band back, and you can see what a nice finish it actually is when you have a serger, especially for fabrics that are a little bit ravel prone and for fabrics that are a little bit stretchy. So we'll talk a lot more about the fabric um, just before we close up here today. Let's get over now to the pattern. Let me show you a few things about the pattern. First of all, robe patterns are something that, you know, find one you like and uh, perfect the fit, make a, a trial garment, and then use that same robe pattern over and over and over again. But again, if you look at the um, sample garment here, you could see that instead of having uh, kind of that bulky fit that you have from set-in sleeves or kimono style sleeves, you have a little bit of a sleeker look. So that's another reason I like to make something like this myself. Again, sure I could buy it, but it's probably going to be three sizes too big in some places and two sizes too small in other areas. So this way you can perfect it for yourself. Now, we're talking today about sewing and serging. So we want to take a look at the pattern. And if we look at the pattern, we've got standard 5 8 inch seam allowances. And we're going to be doing some different techniques here today, one of which is inserting trim in areas like the pocket. Take a look at the pocket. Take a look at the cuff. And then take a look at that band area. So if we're inserting the trim in an area that already has a seam, we're good to go. If we're inserting the trim in an area such as this pocket piece that wasn't designed for that, then we want to split it apart and we want to add seam allowance. I'm going to add just a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's going to make it really easy to sew the trim and really easy to serge finish the edge. And again, we'll talk about that more in just a, a minute. But if we take a look at the pattern and we go back again to that band area, we're going to have a 5 8 inch seam. So I'm going to want to trim my pattern down, and I've done that. I've measured it. You can use a, um, a little uh, seam gauge or tape measure, and you're going to actually want to trim off 3 eighths of an inch, so we only leave a quarter of an inch seam. Make sure that you match up the seam that that band will be sewn to, which in this case is the center front, and I would, I would also then want to trace off and cut off three-eighths of an inch on that as well. It's very important. Now, we've got, you know, a kind of an easy fit and kind of a generous fit, so it's not as critical for it to be an exact seam allowance. And I'll just give you another little tip. If you think you might mess up on that and you might forget where you did what, make sure you make a note of it. So I might make, you know, a notation on my pattern, say, quarter-inch seam allowance, put a little arrow here. If I've cut pieces apart like I did on this pocket, I'm going to make matching arrows so I know that those two go together. I've determined that whenever I cut out any pattern now, I always leave my pattern pieces pinned to the fabric until it's time to use it. Another thing we always want to do is check for right and wrong side. A lot of times, you know, there's kind of the three second rule. If you look at it, it takes you longer than three seconds to figure out right and wrong. Probably doesn't matter. But if it does matter, then you want to make sure you mark it um, either with a little piece of removable tape or a little um, you know, a little dot or a little X with your, with your marker. I tend to mark the wrong side of the fabric rather than the right, and then I always know I have the wrong side of my fabric wherever I have my, 
those, those marks, okay? So we've got our pattern good to go. We are ready now to move over and make this fun shell tuck trim. So let's go to the sewing machine. And at the machine, I have lots of stitches to choose from. I want to find one that actually is called um, a shell tuck uh, stitch. And it may be called a shell tuck stitch uh, and for a hem. It may be in your heirloom section. It may be in the decorative section. Once you see what it looks like on the machine, you just want to look for a stitch like that. So I'm going to go into the decorative menu. And I already know that that stitch lives in this number two bank. And here it is right here, number 204. And now it's highlighted, so now I know I can change that width. I wanna make it all the way to seven. That's the maximum width. And then I'm going to increase the length. And I've already done a test. I like three and a half, but you can experiment. And now here's the absolute most important thing you need to remember. In order to get this to form a tuck, which is really fun to watch happen, you need to increase your tension. And you're gonna increase it to a number that you're gonna think is crazy, but that's the only way you get this effect. So I'm gonna go all the way up to eight on this. So you'll see in a minute why I need to do that. I'm gonna say okay, and let's talk about what you would use to make this trim. There really are a lot of different choices. I went ahead and got just plain old bias binding. It's um, really ideal for your fabric to be cut on the bias when you create this shell tuck. So buying the binding strips already made is, is really very economical. And generally, you're gonna find um, your trims, your threads um, in, in a certain season are all color match. So there's another tip for you. Make sure you buy everything when you're shopping all at once. Buy your thread, buy your trims. Um, so they all are color match, so you get the right, right colors together. So I've got just a um, piece that I've pressed open, because this was normally meant to be bias tape. I'm gonna fold it in half. And I want you to see where I line this up on the machine. I'm using a regular presser foot. And regular presser feet have different markings on them. They might have a little dash. They may have the inside uh, toe of the foot, the outside. Those can all be indications of um, guidelines for you to follow. And I want you to make sure that you look for that regular standard foot, because that foot has a really flat bottom. You may be tempted to want to use the open toe foot, if, especially if it comes with your machine, but this is far better done with a um, perfectly flat foot. All right, let's get started stitching. So I'm gonna go along and you're gonna see what happens here is as I stitch, the needle jumps. I'm gonna go just a little slower so you can see what's happening here. Okay, it's gonna go and it's gonna uh, march over from right to left. And as it takes that left hand jump, it swings over and it actually pulls the fabric just a little bit. Let me show you on a, on a finished trim piece exactly what that looks like. That's why it's called a shell tuck because it has a little bit of a scalloped edge like a, like a scallop um, shell would. So I've still got my extra width there. What I would need to do next is trim down that excess fabric and cut it down so that I've now got just a quarter inch seam allowance, a little, a, it could be a fat quarter. There's skinny quarters and fat quarters. This could be a fat quarter. So we have plenty of um, space for our stitch to form. Now, let's talk about thread for just a second. Thread can be whatever you like. If you like a little bit of a kind of a shiny look, a little bit of a sparkly look, then I would definitely recommend you go with um, decorative thread. If you want it to have a little bit more of a matte finish, kind of blend in, with the fabric, then you could choose um, just a standard ordinary thread. So now we'd come down to construction and the, the patterns are good at giving you steps, telling you, you know, what seams to sew, you prepare your pocket, you prepare your, your band piece. But when we have um, a fabric that has a, a lot of ravel um, characteristics to it because it's somewhat of a loose weave, it's wonderful if we can finish off the edges with a serger. So there may be a variety of ways we can do that. Let me swing over to the serger and we're gonna um, take a look at a seam that has already been stitched and I'm gonna show you three different ways you could use your serger in combination. So swing over here 
And what I would like you to see is that I've already marked my serger. So why would I put a marker in there? Well, there's little lines on the serger that indicate where 5 8 inch would be if you were able to measure it from the left needle to the actual edge where you're running your fabric. So if I've got a seam that's already been stitched at 5 8 of an inch and I'm ready now to trim off the excess, I can guide that raw edge right along and I put that little bit of um, low-tack tape, kind we use when we do painting and things like that, right along the guideline so that I could just see it a little bit better. And as I run this um, seam through my serger, I'm just going to look at the tape, run it right through. And ideally, if I wasn't looking up, um, I would get a perfect quarter-inch seam and finish that edge very nicely. We could also st um, stitch a uh, an open seam. When we wanted to press it open, we would just open that out, and then we would be surging single layer. Okay, it won't go all the way down, it'll just go part way. Okay, so that would allow us to open that up. So a lot of times we want to do that um, 5 eighths of an inch seam on our sewing machine so we can try on the fit. Now let's say I've got this all worked out and then the next time I go to make this robe, I just want to serge as many seams as possible. So I can take my fabric and line it up. I'm going to just pre-trim just that first little bit. Because remember, I'm trimming away 3 8 of an inch. That just helps it get a little bit easier to cut at the beginning. I'm going to line that up with the edge and then I'm going to follow that same guide. So I've got a perfect seam stitched at the 5 8 inch line, but finishing only at a quarter of an inch wide. So it's all ravel resistant and nice and smooth and even. So let's swing back over here and take a, a couple minutes just to look again at the fabric and think about some different ideas, okay? We've got lots of options. If you have embroidery machine, you may want to consider doing a monogram. That certainly customizes it. This wonderful waffle weave is so soft and so absorbent, it, it's very comfortable to wear. But you want to use a topper when you do embroidery, and you want to use a tearaway stabilizer on the back, and you're going to have great, great results. So I hope you'll have fun making your own spa robe. Maybe make a spa basket to go with it, make it a gift, and have a great spa day at home or away.